Eastside Prieto here with Stratwell, and today is a very special episode. Today we are with ABO Biostero, the king and the guru of multifamily. This is my boy from a long time, and I respect this guy highly. If you want to learn more about multifamily, my buddy's here to just spill all his secrets and his tips and his past experience in that game, transitioning from flip houses all the way through to multifamily and having eight, more than 800 plus doors. That's pretty impressive in my book and should be in yours. Stay tuned. Yeah, man, so here we are, Abel. Good to see you here. Thank you guys for having me. Happy, sure. happy to have you on the, on the show. Um, really excited to get into the nitty gritty about the multifamily. Um, we've, we've watched you, you know, go from single family homes to the multifamily space and, and blow up in that space and really happy to bring you on, on the show. So thanks for coming on. I'm excited, man. Thank you guys for having me. I've been wanting to get on here for a while. He said, knows that I follow up and when you're going to, when you're going to have me on, I was only trying to get the platform ready, bro. I want to make sure that the lighting just hits you at the perfect angle, bro. So you can bring out that beauty that you have. You know, that got you into all these deals from yes. the flipping to the 825 plus uh, units you own now. Yes. Uh, tell me more about that, bro. So, so tell us, yeah. How, how did you get into the whole multifamily? Why did you get into it? Tell, tell us about that. You know, it, it's something that happened on, on a gradual basis. Um, it, it, it probably started from looking for another source of income. Um, I was running into the issue that my life was just basically always relying on the money of a flip. The next flip, the next... Uh, uh, sale and I just wanted to have a little bit more peace and have a little bit of cash flow yeah. on a monthly basis that would cover my, it started just covering my overhead. Or if I could build some source of income that could pay for my car, right. could pay for my mortgage, could pay for my expenses. And then from that, I started educating myself, started learning more about it. Um, what's the, you know, what's the best product to buy? And um, I would see these big guys buying these big apartment complexes. And I'm like, how do they do how, it? How do they do it? How yeah. do they structure it? How they like? How does it work? And um, didn't really have the sources around me as a mentor to do that yet. But I definitely had a lot of sources of podcasts, <laughs> uh, a lot of books, audio books, and YouTube. Oh, so right. I learned a lot through that. Uh, I think that that's one of the biggest things right now that that's really educating a lot of the public out there, especially in this quarantine time, right? Is YouTube giving people the advantage to learn more and to have the time to sit there and really take it upon. I mean, I've been your friend for a long time and I remember seeing you book hungry, just eating books yeah. on like on a daily basis, right? Yeah. Just all the time. You were you would motivate me into reading books and and all that source of information. I saw that transition happen. It was a pretty, pretty intense. Well, I'll, I'll correct you on the audiobooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> audio books. Yeah. Well, that's, like, that's the I modern audio book like crazy. It sucks because I can't put the audio book in a library yeah. where people can see what I've read. Sure. But it's, I have it all on my, my phone. Okay. Yeah. Good. I love it. Good. You've, de you've definitely made a big stride, right? Because yeah. tell me, the, how, what's the most difficult challenges that you face, right? Going that you went from, because you obviously, you mentioned that you were, uh, you were actually looking for ways to cover different debts in your life, right? And it gets to a point where you just cover all your overhead and now you just start making profits, right? And you made the transition from flips, right? Which was a, it's a very, you know, lump sum type of business, right? Where you invest and then you hope to get a return. You invest, you hope to get a return. And now you're in the multifamily where it's a long-term play, right? Raising capital, you know, going through uh, ways of, of renovating pro properties, uh, effectively and efficiently right where you're making returns and the long-term play tell me that transition how, how crazy you know, the, that? The, the transition was more of a mindset it was the fear of leaving something that i knew so well yeah until something that i knew nothing about so the challenges was all in my mind um but it, it all took that first taste that i got when i started buying these duplexes the, the duplexes were purchased with the intentions like, okay, if this doesn't work, I'm going to flip them. Right. There's a lot of equity in them. Um, they're hot. They move quick. We all know how fast they sell. Yeah. Um, and uh, bought, bought one duplex, rented it out, got the taste of the money, refinanced it, and then just started copying and kept doing that over and over. And I just, you know, one duplex was making me 600 bucks a month. And another was making me 400. And then that started piling up. And then I'm like, okay, I think I can scale this. Um, I wasn't reinventing the wheel, right? You know, what I'm doing is something that investors have done, you know, throughout the investment of real estate. Um, but I got a little bit creative. There was a product that came out a couple of years ago when they started doing blanket mortgages for this type of product that didn't exist before. Right. So that gave me the tools to be able to buy 
a package of um, duplexes and fourplexes and refinance them and just keep doing it again gotcha. over and over. And um, that led to uh, buying more fourplexes and triplex duplexes. So I, went, I didn't really jump into the, the small apartment complexes, uh, but once I saw what they were generating, but I also saw the amount of expenses I was accumulating right. with these properties. Because they were also separated. Yeah, I was scattered around. around. I had 70 roofs to take care of all throughout South Florida and Broward. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a deal that uh, that I, I purchased 35 duplexes in Homestead, uh, which uh, you guys helped me execute that because at that point um, I was scaling the business, but I got really overwhelmed with the task of you know rehabbing all these properties yeah. and then actually selling my other products that I had, my other flips. Right. And um, I remember I reached out to, to you and Eddie and I was like, Dude, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you were very, you were very overwhelmed. I remember yeah. that was in a very rough part of town. Um, it had been overtaken already by squatters. In terms of talking blocks and blocks of squatters, just people just inhabit, habitating homes that are not. They were just they were just taking possession of homes like if it was just a free for all. The, yeah, the, the pro, when you bought them, they were they were pretty uh, distressed. That's well, cool. they were distressed. I, I bought it from the story. I mean, it's a great story. I bought it from someone who actually built those duplexes you know, 40 years ago. Wow. And those tenants have been there 30 years right. paying, you know, for two bedrooms, 350 bucks, which we all know here wow. in Bay County, that's, right. that's unheard of. So it, 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 it was, it, it's sad because it's a business model that, that I'm in, you know, we buy, create value. Uh, and sometimes, you know, some of these tenants do lose out on these low rents of course. Uh, that, that were just years behind. Um, so that was a challenge. That was the challenge, and that's when I became overwhelmed. There's a lot of crime in the area, a lot of upset tenants that were just taking it out yeah. on me as a new owner. Sure. And um, you guys helped me execute that selling. And I remember when I sat with you guys, we were strategizing: do we sell this in a package deal? Yeah. And um, we did our numbers, and we figured out that the best way was to sell them individually. Of course. And it ended up being a home run. Yeah. Yeah, that was the way to do it. We yeah. timed the market perfectly at that time. I mean, we he had bought him at such a great price that we saw he had so much equity in between each one of them that I remember uh, we went out there, we took professional pictures. We did some of the interior. We tried to get the best ones. And some of them were in horrible shape. I mean, and we'll we'll drop the links below so you can see that. I think we still have a few of those. So you can actually walk him through and see what I'm talking about. I mean, you have walls that were just covered in like dirt, uh, doors, that, bedroom doors that were uh, being locked by master locks. I mean, it was just, it was a crazy scenario. Yeah, that was creepy. Yeah. And, uh, Abel one by one went in, uh, evicting some of them, working out with some of them, you know, we're, we, we, we kind of did a team effort in that sense. Yeah. Uh, and then setting them one by one, two, two at a time, one at a time. And that was, uh, that was awesome. We got them financially ready and we were able to exit out of that package pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the, the best strategy we did was that we figured out who our exit buyer was, of course. who was the, the top paying buyer for that type yeah. of product. And, it flew. I think everyone was like an FHA buyer. Everybody was, was a, yeah. Buyers. Was an investor. Was an investor FHA product with an with an FHA product. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that that's really that that's the name of the game. That's what we do. That's what we do at, at Stratwell. Like we we're, we're looking at how how do we get the strat how do we get this product? Who's the right buyer for it? And how do we get this product ready for that buyer in the least cost possible so we can get it to that buyer at the lowest cost possible and move the product fast and get the seller the highest execution on the price. So that's that's the name of the game. Um, so pretty good stuff. So um, going into this whole uh, real estate investment, you go, you start buying this, you get out of that property. So how do you go into, how do you make that transition over now into the, the multifamily, into the, so, into the bigger stuff? Yeah. So then I started, uh, started underwriting, you know, 15, 20 units, 25 units, 30 units and started figuring out, okay, I, I need to take the leap. I need, I need to have one roof with 20 units, All right. figure out. Um, how I'm going to put this together. And one of the things that attracted me most about uh, apartment uh, syndications and multifamilies is it's not rocket science. It's not that hard to understand. Right. Uh, unless you lie to yourself or what, you know, what expenses are going to be, you know, you, 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 when you start sitting down, you start crunching numbers, it's pretty basic math. Um, and immediately that pulled me in. I'm like, all right, I don't, I don't, you know, this is- I don't need a college degree. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, all right, I just need crazy to just do my research, do my numbers. Yeah. Uh, have, you know, well, property management company that's gonna help me execute the management. That's another thing that I restructured uh, when I went into the, you know, started scaling the multifamilies. I started, I stopped self-managing. 
Okay. Um, I'm not saying I'm against it, but right? I'm glad I did it because I learned it. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things that as soon as I, I, I hired a third party property management, it just helped me do what I love to do. Gotcha. So, you know, and it helped me scale my business. And it was focusing on the acquisitions, right? And acquiring more doors and scaling that business to a bigger degree and a bigger pedigree of, of multifamily. You're considered a, a big dog in this game, right? Because most people buy a few duplexes and triplexes. I mean, you went from the transition in like less than a few years, you went from flipping homes, duplex packages to boom, owning towns basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh it, it, he's very humble doesn't like to talk about it by the way that's why he yeah. talks very highly about his motivation and stuff i don't want to get the real the real scoop out of it for you guys you know so, what's the time tar- so like self-managing you felt you were getting into a lot of trouble it, managing it, these properties self-managing didn't fit my style my personality it right. just I honestly like uh, i i figured out that i gotta do the things i love sure and managing property management on a daily basis was not something i loved right i, I like the acquisition i like the raising capital i like having conversations with investors i like the, the operation side executing something that we're saying that we're going to do yeah and at the end of the year all right guys we hit our target our pro forma rents are hit we executed our rehab now let's start making money on this thing right that's what i loved about it i leave the management to the experts and that was a hard process for me. And when I did it, it was just like, okay. It's I'm a relief. Out. I was taking the stress that, off. Yeah, it's getting that 11 o'clock phone call from a, a tenant upset. <laughs> takes a toll on you it's not for of everyone of course yeah, yeah of course you're like a punching bag man yeah, yeah. yeah. shout out to all the property managers yeah. out there uh you guys are beasts a lot of respect and, 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 yeah, a lot of respect a lot of respect for property management yeah, yeah. i think we've all done it. i don't i know you guys don't yeah yeah. Yeah. Are, yeah. We, uh, yeah we've done our fair share, fair share of <laughs> <laughs> no enough to know i don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> you know unless it's a short-term transitional thing i'm, I'm not into the game of property management but, so but, what's your target uh, going back to your multifamily what's your target cap rate that you're looking for out there where what is it what's the ideal project right and tell the public out there what you're looking for right because we don't we we have a few people out there and you know maybe they have something that that they want to shoot at you right and if they do feel free his information is going to be down below and take this time right now also to make sure to subscribe to our channel turn the notifications on follow us on facebook instagram and stay up to date with all our content. We love to keep providing this and finding more info and tidbits from, from professionals like Abiel. It's my boy, again, I can't stress it enough. I'm, I'm, I'm just proud to have him here. You know, ca- cap rates, it's one of those things that, um, if you call me, you tell me, Abiel, I have an 8%, 9% cap rate, of course, I'm gonna get out of my chair and go like, okay, I need to see it now. <laughs> but you can send me a 5% cap rate, I'm still gonna underwrite the deal. right? Because uh, sellers and brokers have their way of playing around with these cap rate numbers, right. that it doesn't really matter. I'm still gonna underwrite, underwrite the deal and like really what, dig deep. what my numbers are and dig in deep. Okay, why is this cap rate there? And you just, you, once you start going into deep, you just start, they just start popping at you. But that comes with experience. So right. I made a lot of mistakes also with, with cap rates. And, you know, um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that investors make in multifamily is not having reserves. Okay. And I, and I mean, even it's a small scale of a duplex. You know, not setting money aside for that big repair that's coming. Right. It's going to come. Of course. Uh, I don't care how new your property is. They're coming. The appliances, I've had brand new appliances go down on me. Uh, your AC technicians. That, it's not just one. It's like yeah, 10. Yeah. So exactly. So, it, it, you know, not having reserves and another surprising one is turnovers, you know, which we're going to see a lot of that in this market coming up. Right. You're going to have a lot of turnovers. That deposit that you waived, that last month that you waived to get that tenant in, you know, you're going to pay for it out of your pocket. It's going to come out out of your pocket. You got to have a reserve. You got to set money aside for that tenant that's leaving that trashed your apartment. Um, It's going to happen. I'm not saying it happens a lot, but you're going to have to. Right. What do you, how do you feel with the distress of the market that's coming and this whole forbearance, right? And the mortgage and and the people not paying their rents, right? How's that affected you and your business and the growth of your scale? Um, And and you don't just buy in Florida, right? Again, people want to, they want people to understand it. You're buying these all across the U.S. Yeah, so we're in the Midwest, yeah, in South. Uh, we just bought in Ohio, uh, Atlanta, and throughout Florida. Sure. Um, it's definitely affecting the business. There's okay. no way around it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of money that's been pumped into the to the to the, to the country right now. So it's hard to kind of say how how much you know it's how much is real. What's going on? Um, it's going to be interesting what we're going to see next year. Um, what I am seeing is nobody wants to get evicted. Of course, families don't want to get evicted. They want to pay. Yeah. Um, very, very rarely you're going to have tenants who are just not going to care and they're going to be like, evict me. 
Um, it's really important to have, I'll go back to that now, to have a strong property management company. It's, uh, they, they need to know what they're doing more than ever. Right. Uh, but you also, as a landlord and as an owner, you need to uh, sit down with them and see what they're implementing. You can't just assume that they're doing the right thing. You need to see what their strategies are. Um, we've, done, we've done multiple things. One of the strategies that we've done is we take small payments. All right, you can't pay the full amount. Something. We'll take something right now. Right. Um, another strategy that I love doing, I do this one in my backyard here in, in Miami, is um, I figure out what, the, what employments they had. Um, probably one of my best uh, maintenance guys came from that. You know, he lost his job in a hotel in Miami Beach. Sure. This guy's a beast. This guy knows everything. Right. Been working at a building for years. Right. So, you know, so I, I, I've been trying to find out what tenants are doing that what their prior employers were. And I mean, I buy value add probably, so I'm constantly rehabbing. Right. So we just been giving work back to, to the employees. Uh, there was a, there was a, a few of our, in our little Havana properties that they worked, they were cleaning, they were clean hotels. I have them cleaning properties for us. Perfect. So it kind of created a culture where I'm putting back, putting them back, doing, uh, giving them work right. and they're and paying me rents. Paying you back. So that's a strategy we implemented, it's worked. But at the end of the day, you know, if they don't have the money, they don't, they just, they, they can't, they can't. Right. It's but it's only so much we can do. So you've already seen impact of, of the COVID already in this, in this marketplace. You've yes. seen some of the impact in terms of rents and, and them not being able to make things. Yes. Yeah. So the, the impact has trickled down. It, it's, we, we, we are a classy product. So we're that working class, you know, that 35 to $45,000 a year household income. Sure. Um, that's our product. Um, I've seen the downsizing happening. I've seen folks who are paying the three thousand dollars, the two thousand dollar rents, already trying to making the moves to come to cheaper rents. Yeah. Um, I've seen the increase on our two bedrooms because the work from home environment is of happening. Um, Some people want an office. People want an office or a larger one one where they can work from home. So, so the there's impact. A strong, there's a strong demand. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. They're, they're, what I, what I did see in some of our apartment complexes in Little Havana here in Miami was we increased the rents in our buildings by just a gradual 25 and on some of them 50 bucks because we saw the demand coming in for that lower rental product. Right. So I across the board, that hasn't happened anywhere, but there in that sub-market, we actually bumped up our rents, uh, which was great. It was, it was something that was surprising to me because I, I, had, I, didn't, I hadn't experienced that in the last real estate cycle. Gotcha. That's good. That's interesting. Good stuff. So, what what would you say would be some of the the you know, what would be some advice tips you'd give to somebody who's trying to get into the the multifamily space? Like, what where, where do you start? You know, you're in the, you want to get into the multifamily. You're interested in getting into the business. How do how do you get started? Where where, where do you where do you Assuming you've done a couple of real estate transactions, you've done a couple single families. You're getting a little tired of the retail. You're tired, you're tired of the retail. Of the retail. Yeah. So where do you start? What, what, are some, what, would you, what would you say? What do you need to get? I, I, there's different levels I think that you could start. If, if you don't have any money to start, then um, I would start educating yourself, um, being around it, being in the business. Um, you know, to you got You have to be able to be around the experts to learn from their mistakes, they'll, they'll save you tons of money. Um, one of the things that I owe my leap that I took from the smaller to the bigger scale is I, I partnered up with, with people who have just a ton of more knowledge than I do, a ton yeah. more experience. And that's how we funded SAR Apartment Capital, which has made the last two large acquisitions, the biggest two acquisitions of my career. Yeah. You know, I, I partnered with Rene Sanchez and Sam Gisari, and um, they just, these guys have a ton of apartment experience. So I, I kind of knew what, what the operation needed and what I could bring into it. And I just part, joint, made that joint venture of course. so I could scale the business. Uh, in other words, to answer that question, find partnerships, people right. who you respect in the business, see how you could help them instead of making a burden for them. You know, nobody, nobody wants to mentor and have like another task to mentor or something. You gotta figure out what they need and what you see yourself fitting in there and say, guys, I'm gonna do this for you guys. Right. Let exactly. me get. Let me take care of that. Right. Absolutely. You, you got some that. of the grunt work. Maybe some of the some of the miserable tasks. There's a lot of grunt work. A lot of grunt work. A lot of grunt work yeah. in multifamily. Yeah. 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 That, that's a good point you bring up because I get calls from people says, "Hey, you know, I want to I want to join your team because I want to learn from you." And, and I get that, but you know, I, I don't necessarily want to uh, someone to join me so they can learn from me. 
because that, that's a weird position to be in because yeah. once yeah. you learn from me then what yeah what i want to hear from somebody is hey um i am really good at this and if you let me come on your team i can do this for me yes. for you i can bring this value yes. to your team yeah oh then i'm excited now and guess what in reciprocation you're going to learn from me yes. but you're bringing something of value to me and that's a that's a reciprocation yeah and that that's great so yeah. get the knowledge and, and get the right people in your life yeah, and, and, and support right. each other and, and then at some point you're gonna have to put money into these deals, right? Right. Like sourcing, <laughs> you, like, sourcing, like, and not be afraid to ask for money, right? Yo, that, that that is that's fun. one of the rules. That's one of the rules. A hundred percent. At some point, even if even if you have to put, I'm not gonna say to put all your capital, but I've done it. Um, you want to partner up with someone that you really want to be a part of. You're gonna have to put some skin in the game, of course. Of course. So it, that that would change the whole nucleus of your relationship with that person, right? Because now you're not just there, just operating and just doing the labor work. Like I believe in your product, I believe in what we're doing, and I'm backing it. Yeah, and I'm gonna back it up. Yeah, there's the money yeah. I put it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That makes All sense. Right. You, you did say the word mistake, so I want to go into that. Like, what is what has been some? What is the you know? Because well, <laughs> everybody thinks that you know. Cause here's the thing: when you see somebody who had a lot of success, a, a big mistake people make is they only look at the successes they made. They forget to think about, oh, you know, how am I going to have a perfect road to this rec- this success that I want to have? That's not going to happen. The, the reality is everybody I know that's ever had some success, including Avio, has had a couple of setbacks, some that, that, that they're not proud of, but that are part of the whole learning process and building who the character and the person that you are and the skills that you have today. So let's get into some of the mistakes from the purpose perspective of, you know, what you learn from them, too. You know, um, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where to begin. <laughs> They're just uh, so many. They just feel normal, yeah, right? I, I, it's like I, I, normal. It's scars. It's a lot of scars. <laughs> um, you know, I, of course, I think every mistake that traumatizes you the most are the ones that you know you you lose money for sure, or you burn a good relationship because uh-huh. you lost the money. Uh-huh. And I think as as an investor, your priority is your investor's money. Oh okay. yeah, that that is the far most thing you got to take care of. And it sucks because sometimes, you know, you you don't do your underwriting correctly or you don't foresee things that could come at you, you know, and I'll go into straight into probably one of my most traumatizing experiences dealing with cities um, from an investor perspective. And as a flipper, you know, you 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 see the deal it looks amazing. You underwrite your deal. The comps are there. You know, you can execute this rehab and you're going to be you It's looking nice. But then you don't take in consideration how difficult a city could be with, how working permits, how working with certain contractors. And sometimes you don't know the relationship the contractors have with the city. You you assume that they have good relationships. You assume that their runner has good relationships and you don't know what's going on behind the scene. Right. And you don't have any control sometimes. So to me, that was one of the things that hurt me the most. Uh, not underwriting for the unforeseen cities and permits and issues that could come from that. Gotcha. Like, and for instance, when you say that, it's like, okay, so let's say an electrical outlet needed to go somewhere and per code, they do it per code, but the inspector or the code officer at that moment said, yeah, you know what? I don't want it there. I want it here. Yeah. Right. Things like that, that start to add up, you know, to the bottom line. It it, it, it could even add up from day one when you get your architect and your plans, they tell you, oh yeah, we're going to have your plans and your architect plans in Two to three weeks, they give it to you in a month and a half. Now you're submitting plans to the city month and a half. Now, you know, I know most investors, they bridge along their properties, they're leveraged. So you I'm don't take scared. in consideration that your plans could take four or five months to get approved in a city. Right. And you're four or five months of extra mortgage payments. Exactly. So you, you, you assume like, okay, I, I know I'm by month, 90 days, I'll have this property complete. No, you don't even have your plans approved yet. Right, right. You know, some cities are amazing to work with. They'll push this out. Some city, I'm not going to drop names. Right. You're not getting plans approved for six months. Right. Right. So, and some of them are backed up, right? Some of them are backed up. So to their their defense, some of them are, there is a lot of work out there being done, right? Right. I I know because contracting work right now is even more expensive, right? Right. I'm sure you've had to bring in some in-house people, like you said, get back to your, some of your tenants, right? But contracting is through the roof. I'm sure that's another angle also you've experienced. It's something definitely you need to consider through the COVID. You know, these cities were closed for a long time. Right. There's a backlog. There's, there's, there, there's the, there was the old timeline and now there's a new unknown timeline. So manage your timelines. Be careful with the city. Right. You know, um, to, to, defend, to defend the cities, they're extremely overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. I talk to these guys on a daily basis 
and they're overwhelmed, understaffed. It's it's an environment that's tough. You know, a lot of these municipalities are just, you know, they have a tons of projects going right. on. Right. So as an investor, I don't know how you're going to figure that out, uh, but you definitely got to take in consideration how long that's going to take you to get executed. Gotcha. Um, my advice is contractors tend to have expertise. Some contractors ex uh, have expertise in certain cities. Um, one of my favorite contractors recently basically would turn my jobs away because they were in other cities. He goes, gotcha. I won't take that job. I won't take that job. I won't take that job. Right. I'll take that job because I know that city. Right. I know how they work. And I love that. Yeah. I love that. Honesty. And they're known too. Oh, they, know, no, they know how to move around. They right, know right, how to right. work. They, they have relationships. They could pick up the phone and call someone. And is that you found that those mistakes were found more in your earlier days, right? On the fix and flip type of stuff, because it kind of feel like a lot of your permit work was done in the fix and flip stuff. When in the, the bigger contract and the bigger multifamily stuff, especially at this level, you have bigger budgets, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. In the multifamily, it, no, it happens in single family and multifamilies. Right. It can happen on both sides. Um, it, it, and it came from, I'm not to trash some contractors, they were good contractors and they, they promised you the world, but they had no experience with certain cities. Gotcha. Right. But they wanted to work and they've done good work for you in the past. So you just assume. So qualify, so qualify the contractor. For yeah, sure. include, include in that qualification with the contractor, find out how much experience they have working with that city and what their reputational experience is with that city. Oh. I, I, you, you're, there are some cities that have contractors. They have, they have a database, they, well, all the cities keep a database of the contractor, their license, their insurance, and all that stuff as they permit, you know, they bring the permits. Is that open to the public? You, you can call them and see, hey, XYZ contractor, do you have the records for them? They don't have them for everybody, but if someone, if they did a job recently in the city, they'll have it updated. And you can so, ask that right off the bat. So yeah, I wish you, I would have known that. Yeah, yeah. So that's something to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know but you've already awesome. learned that. You've learned that. <laughs> yeah. No, you're big dog. You know me now. Yeah. I can I can really catch up. They're lying to me. Of course. Right. So that's what they say. Oh yeah, I've done. No, I've uh, done. Yeah. Done. Yeah, they so might have done. done, but within the last year, if they've done, they have their most recent paperwork in the city recorded, and the city yeah. keeps that. Yeah. So you can call the city. Hey, ABC uh, Electrical Contracting. Do you have that their information updated? And they'll be able to tell you right off the bat. So you can kind of get that heads that's up. That's a golden nugget right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're sharing some golden yeah, nuggets. Yeah, you're sharing some And you share some back. And you used to manage some of, some of that multifamily and buy multifamily back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, could, it could cause a lot of harm not doing your, your underwriting and considering all those factors. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. So um, one other thing I wanted to ask you was 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 kind of like in the, uh, the area of financing and, and, and lining up some of the, the financing. So what's the what you, you go you were telling me, oh, before we go into that, I wanted there was we were having lunch the other day and you were talking about a, a new strategy you're, you're taking on as, as, as relates to the quality of the people you bring on and, and how, how you bring them on. You remember that conversation we we're having? Yeah. So so basically what 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 I Re redirected my lifestyle and my partnership. I just, it, it was, it was a life changing experience. I, you know, I, I made a change where, um, I started doing business with, with people that I actually like doing business with. Um, it wasn't about money anymore. Oh, this guy's got money. Okay. Let me do this. It became into something like, all right, do I enjoy talking to this person every day? Right. Do I enjoy having go lunch with this person? If I can't jump on a plane and spend the next two days with you looking at deals in another state and I don't want to do it, I, I shouldn't be investing with you. Of course. Or, or I shouldn't do, be doing a joint venture with you. Right. Right. So you got to enjoy the person also. You got to like who they are, you know, their character, how they carry themselves. So that was that was one of the changes I made. Yeah. And then also the tip that you got from that book that you read remember that, that about about getting you know the best in class. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was the book by uh, Stephen uh, Schwartz. Right. Uh, from Blackstone, um, you know, sometimes I, I think that we just make mistakes by nickel and diming a lot. And we we try to negotiate too much. And sometimes you, you, you got to stop to think like, OK, how can I hire another ABO or someone better than ABO? How can I hire an Isaiah Prieto and Eddie? What does it take to get someone like that in my team? And it's not going to take nickel and diming you. Right. No, right. You're not going to get me a team by I'm not going to get price. you guys to sell my property if right. I'm going to be telling you guys, hey, I only want to pay you this percentage. Right. No. You know, it's, it, it's, you want the best, you got to pay for the best. Of course. And that's what I learned, you know, just not trying to save money on that. Just 
you know, give people what they're worth yeah. and give some incentives along the way. And I mean, you just, all you got to look at is professional athletes. Right. So yeah. invest in talent. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the key. Invest well, in talent. Good people are well, worth the money and the ROI is worth it. Yeah. You're going to get it back. That's the funny thing. The crazy yeah. thing is you're going to get it back in two ways. One is you're gonna, they're going to create, they're going to offer solutions that you wouldn't have otherwise thought about. Because right. the people that are less skilled, you have to tell them what to do. Right. You want people that are telling you what to do, giving you the advice yeah. and supporting you in yeah. that. That's brilliant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love it. I think that's a book on my list of gallery. Oh, there you book. go, man. See what I'm saying? This is, mm-hmm. and picture that on times 10, times 100 back in the day. Yeah. Uh, he's toned it down a little bit now because he's busy <laughs> managing all these properties, right? But but definitely back in the day when we spent a lot more time together, he it was just nonstop books advice. Yeah, so it was, yeah. hey, but hey, have you tried this one? Have you read this one? Have you heard this one? Have you seen this one? So well, I, we we just did some. We just hired someone that you know, I would have never thought I would pay a salary that big, uh, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. Um, so maybe on the next podcast, I'll tell you how that went. <laughs> <laughs> what position is that? It's uh, we hired a project manager in Atlanta. Okay. okay. And um, you know, typically. You see a lot of project managers going for forty five, sixty five thousand, and we we paid double that. So, double that, right? So we it came we, out a good reference guy. And we, we, the track we went, record. We went after LeBron James. You know, I gotcha. said, like I want. That's what I want. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this person's going to be in charge of a six million dollar budget. Of course. So if he could save us money on that and come under that, you know, it's going to be we're going to look a lot prettier. That's did you hear, did you guys just hear that a six million dollar budget right that's one of the that's just that's the renovation. one of your biggest that's a yeah, rehab that's a rehab budget right it's a renovation budget. Yeah. yeah so think about the size of that deal that's one of your biggest deals you closed right yeah we just closed that deal um on last friday we bought a uh, 434 units in atlanta <laughs> Good yeah, job, my man. partners. Awesome. Yeah, well, it's the apartment man. capital. Congratulations! Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate it. So, throw. Go ahead and tell my people here where to find you. Uh, what what you're all about. What if they want to invest with you? What's up? How they do it? Uh, where to call you? Where to meet you? What what's up? What where, where do I get yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, reach out to me at info at s a r apartment capital dot uh, That's our that's our new venture, our new uh, uh, company that we created between me and Sam and Renee. Um, it's just specifically for apartment class C product. We're buying throughout Florida, Atlanta, North Carolina, Ohio. Um, we see great opportunities coming up in the next, the next year. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of distressed apartment complex and that's what we're going to do. Create that. You guys, you guys put the majority of the capital up, right? So you're getting sources for some of the funds. You're, you're, you're just filling in a gap, right? Yeah. So that's how you this work. goes back to what I said earlier. Like we put our money into the deals too. Right. Uh, it's not that type of platform where we just get 100% of the money from, sure. from investors. Right. Um, we back it up by putting our money into these deals too also. That's good That's stuff. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Hey, thank you so much, man, for, for coming yes, on and, and giving us all the tidbits. I hope to have you back soon because you're my boy. So I want to just come back here and start and just shoot the stuff and just go and just hang out and talk. I want to know more. I love it. Thanks for having me. It's always yeah, it's always awesome. a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe, follow, and uh, stay tuned for more informative information and content being provided by us. Uh, I think the next one that we're going into now is the August market update. So stay tuned for that coming up in the next coming weeks. Uh, stay tuned.